I can't remember when you were there When I didn't care For anyone but you I swear We've been through everything there is Can't imagine anything we've missed Can't imagine anything The two of us can't do Through the years You've never let me down You've turned my life around The sweetest days I've found I've found with you I've loved the life we've made And I'm so glad I stayed Right here with you I listened to before I swear You've taught me everything I know Can't imagine needing someone so But through the years it seems to me I need you more and more Through the years Through all the good and bad I know how much we As long as it's okay, I'll stay with you.
If being right means being without you, I'd rather live a wonderful life. Your mom and daddy say it's a shame that you're downright disgraced. But as long as I got you by my side, I don't care what your people say. Good evening, everyone. My name is Antoinette Mason Hall. I am the sister of Cecil Gittins and the first daughter of Godfrey Gittins. Now, what I just say, said sounds a bit confusing, so let me clarify. My sister Cecile and Godfrey, her husband, took me to live with them when they got married and I moved into their homes. Actually, I was the troubled child, so only Cecile could control me. She took me and Godfrey brought Floyd, my brother. It was from that family setting that I learned the traits and values I live with today. And I have instilled them in my children and grandchildren. First, I'm going to take you to a few of these traits and values. Doing things as a family. I call them the Mason Giddings family. We always ate lunch together on Sundays. Godfrey would be in the kitchen with a kitchen towel over his left shoulder, cooking the Sunday meal. We were called to the table. The table was well set out. You had the meats, the salad, the water jug, the wine, yeah, we had the wine glasses and the drink glasses. We were then served the lunch plates, which was plated to perfection. We didn't have our plates seated. He came in with our plates. The rice was placed in a round bowl, and then it was plate. It was you, you, he, 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 he had it. It was on a plate, it was in a bowl, then he would turn it over and put it on the plate. And beside that rice, wrong, it wrong, imagine it wrong, we had the steam veg. The steam veg had to look cute. They, they had to be long and plated. And then left, that was left with the left side for the meat. Then he will come to the table, take a knife, and carve these thin, thin slices of meat. They were, they were per perfection, 
and put them on our plate. And then we will sit and talk about our week. We will sit as a family and talk about our week. I do that up to today with my family. Liquor. He loved to display liquor. He collected the cutest, unusual bottles filled with, filled with these, this liquor. And today, I collect them. I love bottles. And I collect and display these bottles. Cleaning. We had to clean every weekend. I didn't know if Floyd can remember. And this was our cue. Dobby Dobson, music. The Jamaican artist, Dobby Dobson. Oh, Donna, I love you. Sweet dreams of you. Wait for me, my love. These songs would be echoing. You could just hear these songs going off. You had to get up. And we got up and we cleaned and those songs would just be on the biggest speakers you can find. Yes. I think this one was his favorite because he played this one continuously, Muriel, Muriel. And I love, love, love this song. From Jimmy Cliff, he played, come into my life, come into my life, and we would always dance. I would dance, sing, and clean. And I still play music, sing, and dance as I clean, especially on Independence Day when I put up my Christmas tree. He made rum punch for everyone, and it was the best. That drink became my favorite, and I too learned from him how to make it, and I make rum punch, and I drink it, and I love it. We went to a lot of island tours, both day and moonlight picnics. I don't know, I don't know if they still have moonlight picnics with his friends from, friends and workmates from Sam Lars Castle, he worked there. And I still continue, I love to tour the island and I always take my family on picnics. We ate out at hotels, the hotels he worked. I love to stay and wine and dine at hotels. And one of my criteria for a man, because I'm single, is that he must be able to wine and dine me at a hotel. But I'm still single, so they're not meeting. I still cannot find somebody to meet that criteria. The beach. I was introduced to Pebbles and Brown's Beach by Godfrey. He took us there to see the sunset. I, if you have never been, you must go. Gaze at the stars and enjoy whatever tourists, the tourists was enjoying. There, if I asked for a drink, I was given a real fruit punch a real fruit punch. He would bring a fruit punch for me that is made out of the real fruit. They, at that particular time, they would take the fruit, crush it, and give you that real fruit punch. I love that. And my grandson does it for me on occasions. Today, I still visit Pebbles and Brown Beach. Every Saturday, I go, I get my umbrella, I lie in my chair, and I gaze across the ocean. That does something to me. That clears my mind. So it is very, very therapeutic. And for that, 
I thank him as well. Dress and dance. Boy, could he dress. And I must say thank you to whoever uh, dressed him today because it looked like him. He would wear some unusual colors and match them with his pointy tip shoes and his bell bottom pants and and this this these pants were skinny and fall back and be on his way. As you can see, I emulate that. I love to dress and I love to dance. What a terrific dancer. As I said before, his house was filled with music. So we danced. I love, love, love to dance. I love to dance. I teach my family how to dance. Every different style because I don't know for who don't know, you dance if you have a particular type of music. G will teach you how to do the good foot and we will do the bounce and we will do a lot of this. This if I had a so we dance. G, you have impacted my life a great deal. Note that your traits and your values will be continued in my family. I do them, I practice them, my grandchildren, they do them, they laugh. My daughter, very good dancer, my son. G, please rest in peace. Now, for all of you, you would have heard me say that the dancing, the music, was very, very crucial in my life. And now, I want to encourage some of you, please get up. I'm going to play Muriel. And I want us to celebrate this song. I want to celebrate him because he loved to dance. So please get up, dance with me, sing these two songs with me. The first song we're going to sing and dance to is Muriel. Please stand. Please stand. You can do whatever you want to right where you are. Final song that we used to dance to. Please get up and dance. my life 
Thank you. Good evening. My name is Shanice, Godfrey's adopted daughter. Today I say goodbye to my adopted father over 25 years. Over 25 years ago, he chose me as his child. Never mind, I always call him Uncle Godfrey. He fathered me. I have a lot of memories growing up with him, but the ones that stood out the most is, he, is him teaching me food preparation and good table etiquette about different kinds of drinks, and he also taught me how to make his favorite rum punch. And up to this day, I still make it during work. As I read this, sorry, as I'm writing this, I realize I probably found my love for working in the hospitality industry through him from the way he cut and plated his food. Everyone knew when he cut, the first name he would call is mine. Mom would always say, that's what you like, Shanice, because whatever he cut, I can eat, especially his soup and his, pig, and his rice with pig tail. Christmas time is always special in the house. He and I shared many, many Christmas memories in the kitchen from breakfast on Christmas morning to dinner in the evening. This was always important to us. He and I would set the table and it would be fully decked out like if we are in a five star restaurant. His favorite thing was cutting the ham. He's gonna cut and eat. No matter what size the ham was, it was gone in two days. Every time he passed through the kitchen, he is going to eat ham. These memories will last with me forever. May he rest in peace. Good afternoon. I heard Antoinette say that she was dad's first daughter. I think I was his fourth. Cheryl, Aisha, and then me. And I say that, my name is Deidre McKenna. I am Reese's mom. I say that because he called me that many times. A lot of what has been said already you will hear again, because we all know dad for who he was. His famous rum punch, his setting of the table. You know, I, the first time I met dad, I was around 17, 18 years old. That long ago, can't believe that time is gone. And we connected instantly. From his love of cares, when I was young, I used to wake up to hear my dad out on his care, making sure that it was working, the lights were working, and everything was in order. When I came to St. Philip, it was the same thing with, with Godfrey Grandad. He would check the care every morning, every midday, every evening, every night. <laughs> Mom used to complain sometimes and say, well, you always picking at that, you always picking at that. If dad heard a noise on the vehicle driving home, dad is going to check it. And he would always say, that's all right with you, because I may be saving a couple hundred dollars down the road. That's what he believed. I remember when I met him, I was super impressed, because 
I came from a household where my dad grew up in the old school. The only thing he used to know how to do was boil water. Dad knew how to cut everything under the sun. He used to clean the house from top to bottom. He used to press. <laughs> Every he set the table. When I came there, I heard that I worked in the hotel industry. And I saw why. Because as soon as you walk in, you will see the table set. You will see the napkins folded in some pattern or some design or the other. If it wasn't a swan, it was some other design that dad would do, just like you are going to a formal outing. It's how the house used to be. I'm surprised I'm, I'm going so well so far. The only person in here that cries more than me probably is Cheryl. <laughs> I remember one of my fondest memories of dad and I never told mom this, so she's hearing it for the first time. I, I lived there for about 10 years. And mom always will come down the stairs on the morning quarreling. Quarreling about something. <laughs> but everybody had to be up once mom is up. So this particular morning, dad and I were up. And we were sitting by the bar. And mom came down, and mom exclaimed, y'all up already something like that she said I think she meant me really <laughs> that I was up already and then she proceeded to start quarreling about something I can't remember what but she went back upstairs dad watched me I watched him and the two of us started to break down in laughter and I said for a minute there I thought she wasn't going to quarrel anymore <laughs> I also remember before dad got ill, and he was driving taxi, there was nothing, There was nothing that I would ask dad to do that he couldn't do or didn't do. Be it for me or be it for Reese. No matter what time of the day, no matter what it was, I could call on dad at any point he was there. Sometimes dad, I remember an evening, I couldn't get Reese back up to St. Philip. And dad had left work and he was on his way home. And when I called him, he was somewhere near Sam Lars Castle. Dad drove and came back to Ealing Grove for her. That's the kind of person he was. Thanks. Um, when dad became ill and first, well, not the first time he had to go to dialysis, but his frequent trips to the hospital. Earlier on, dad was adamant that he was taking the van home. Don't want anybody to pick him up. Yeah, I can get home. You know, you know how stubborn he could be. But this particular evening, I got a call. Um, I think Aisha was on duty and she couldn't leave at the point in time. Um, but this lady called me from his phone. So I picked up the phone. I was like, hi, Dad. And she was like, no, this is not Dad. Um, is this Deidre, his daughter? See you then? Or I say, you always say it's his daughter. I say, yes, it is. She said, um, he's at the bus stop here on Belmont Road, and he's vomiting, and he's not feeling well, and they don't think he can make it up. And I literally dropped everything he was doing at work, and I went for him. And I drove him home to St. Philip because he would do that for me. And anytime dad called on me, I would go. And those are some of the best memories I have of dad. Um, I love you, dad. Sleep in peace.
Good evening. I'm here to celebrate your life and the measures of it worth and every single life you've touched whilst you were on this earth. I wish to pay my last respects. That's why I'm here today, to thank you for your friendship and all memories I hold dear. It's been a privilege, sorry, it's been a privilege to have known you. We were family, not just friends. And I will carry you in spirit. Maybe we'll meet up once again. I met Godfrey about 25 years ago. I told him my name was Brenda, but he would never call me Brenda. Always Bren. g was like a dad to me. I would sit and talk to him about anything, no matter what. At the end, of, at the end he would always make me laugh. He was a fun-loving and respectable man around everyone. If you pass and saw a crowd laughing, you know that g was there, always expressing a positive outlook. He had this ability to turn a bad experience into a good experience. I think he had a good grace, a good grace for, uh, <sighs> G was also a man who believed you should have manners and was willing to speak to you if you showed none. I recall some young persons passing us one day and they did not speak. G said, good afternoon. You all don't have any manners? He was also forgiving and calm individual, not to say that he wouldn't get vets. However, Godfrey would walk away, and by the time he came back to the pers that person that offended him, he would be talking and laughing. He did not hold anyone in his mind. Patience. Of his patience, I can attest. I recall a few years ago, when Godfrey wanted to teach me how to set up some documents. My hard head was not taking it at all. I would have preferred to do things how I know, but he continued to try with me. I left, my I left not fully understanding that evening, but made sure that I came back again so I could learn to do it right. Sometimes, we will, we will want to remain in our comfort zone with the attitude, this is how I accustom doing it. But the business world changing and we have to make changes to keep up. G was there helping to guide me into doing things the right and better way. I am thankful for, his, for the friendship and the fatherly guidance that Godfrey has shared with me for a quarter of a century. To his family, thank you for sharing him with me and allowing me to share in your remembrance of him. God bless and comfort you. May Godfrey continue to rest now until Jesus Christ comes again. Thank you, Brenda. Hi, everybody. I'm Aisha, one of his many daughters, as you can tell. Um, I'm going to say a few words from some of his colleagues, as well as some of his prior clients through his taxi business. Um, this email came from Amber McCarrath, who lives in Canada. And I quote, I'd known your dad for about 20 years. I was a young woman when I met him. 
He always treated me. <laughs> With respect and kindness. And he always made me laugh. <laughs> yeah, that laugh. I'd only ever seen him a couple times a year, but I considered him a friend. <laughs> he made my job so much easier. Oh, God. As he was the most dependable person ever, with utmost attention to detail and a sharp mind. <laughs> I never had to worry when I was working with your dad. He always made sure that everything happened as it should, and I've always been so grateful for that. I eventually started my own family and started to bring them along on my work trips, and so he got to meet my daughter. I know that he's had a long struggle but I know it must nonetheless be so difficult to lose him. I will miss him. Take good care and my most heartfelt condolences on your loss. Amber then emailed another colleague and let them know um, the news. And Jeff Burry, a government colleague and long-term partner, wrote this back to Amber. And Jeff said, Beyond the measure of providing exemplary service to us on our many missions over many years, he became our unforgettably kind and good nature friend. And I know many of you in here can attest to so many of the things that Amber and Jeff spoke about. And we want to take this time to say thank you for coming to honor his life. Mm -hmm.
Good evening to everyone. As we celebrate the homegoing of Goffrey Gittins, I want you to join with me as we sing and as we celebrate his life. We're going to start with that song, Every Praise is to Our God. Every praise is to our God, every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Every praise is to our God, every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise is to our God. God my Savior, God my healer, God my deliverer. Yes, he is, yes, he is. God my Savior, God my healer, God my deliverer. Yes, he is, yes, he is. Every praise is to our God. Every word of worship with one accord. Every praise, every praise is to our God. Sing hallelujah to our God. Glory hallelujah is to our God. Every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise, every praise is to our God. My God is awesome. He can move mountains. Keep me in the valley, hide me from the rain. My God is awesome, heal me when I'm broken. Strength where I've been weakened, forever he will reign. My God is awesome, 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 awesome. My God is awesome, today I am forgiven, His grace is why I'm living. Praise his holy name. My God is awesome. He's awesome. 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 My God is awesome. I love you, Lord. For your mercy never fails me All my days I've been held in your hand From the moment that I wake up Until I lay my head I will sing of the 
goodness of God. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. Cause all my life you have been And all my life you have been so, so good With every breath that I am able Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God I love your voice You have led me through the fire In darkest nights You walk close like no other I know you as a father I know you as a friend And I have lived in the goodness of God. And all my life you have been faithful. And all my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able. Oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. Your, your goodness is running after, is running after me. Your goodness is running after, is running after me. With my life laid down, I surrender. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. 
the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His compassion never fails. Every morning they are renewed. Jesus said, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. If we live, we live to the Lord. And if we die, we die to the Lord. So then whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end the Christ died and lived again, that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We brought nothing into the world and we take nothing out. The Lord gives and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Almighty and ever loving God, we thank you for the life of our brother Godfrey Stanton, for the many blessings which you gave him and which he shared amongst us. We pray especially at this time for his family, for those he called near and dear and kith and kin. We ask that you may strengthen them in the days ahead and grant them the belief and the faith that one day we too shall meet again in the world to come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our opening hymn, To God be the glory, great things he hath done.
Kindly be seated. The eulogy will now be offered by Cheryl Pierce and uh, Gregory Gittins. Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> it is indeed a good evening. It's the evening that we celebrate my father's life. Godfrey Stanton Gittins, often referred to as G, RGG, was the third child and eldest son born to Benjamin and Ethelyn Gittins on the 3rd September, 1950. He is survived by his nine siblings. Godfrey received his early education at Shrewsbury Primary School and later the Princess Margaret Secondary School. At the age of 22, Godfrey, my dad, knew that he wanted to start a family and so took Cecile Mason as his wife. This union bore three children. This extended his already established fatherhood, creating a blended family of six children. Cheryl, that's me, Vaughn, Alan, Gregory, Andre, and Aisha. You would think that six would have been enough, but no. They later informally adopted Shanice, and so this tribute is through the eyes of his children. Daddy worked in the tourism industry at many hotels, for over 30 years, during which he was a waiter, a barman, a wine steward, and a supervisor in management. It was during this time that Dad sought to further his education and enrolled in the then hotel training school, where he obtained a certificate in supervisory management. Additionally, he attended the Cornell School of Hospitality in New York where he pursued a further professional developmental program in the industry and was also very successful. After his tenure in the tourism industry, Dad became an entrepreneur, owning and operating his taxi business. His very strong work ethics and high levels of professionalism continued to be a priority. Consequently, he forged many friendships and repeated clients. I deem it necessary to reiterate what was read earlier from one of his former clients and friends. And I quote, and he always made me laugh. He was the most dependable person ever with utmost attention to detail and a sharp mind. He made sure everything happened as it should. Another sentiment worthy of note from a former friend and client, beyond the measure of providing exemplary service to us on our many missions over many years, he became our unforgettably kind and good-natured friend. A true reflection of that. Dad's love for cars made mobile or drive through life. Pride and constant maintenance meant a polished application of turtle wax which gleamed on his vehicles. In the garage, Dad loved the puzzle of a new tinker in the car. He loved the thrill of investigating, sourcing, purchasing, and fitting cars in a mechanized manner. Instruments, tools, and their physics intrigued my father. He could pass an entire day doing anything car related. This meant his ability to de-puzzle and give motion to cars. Family gatherings or get-togethers were one of my dad's favorite pastimes during our early years. Poetically said, he was the transparent road of hospitality 
that taxied his way to barbecued happiness at Long Bay or Taylor Bay. Our dad was also a lover of cricket in his early years. Did you know he was actually a member of the Pillars and Post Cricket Club? He was a middle order batsman and fielded on in the mid on position. It was fun to see dad with his slashinger bat and cricket pads as he made shots at the Sound Lord's Castle pitch. Of course, because of his height, one could hardly see him behind the pads. Dad also had a very special love for music. He has left behind a vast array of vinyl albums covering all genres of music. Calypso, spooge, ska, reggae, lover's rock, country music. The bedroom will certainly miss his collection of musical equipment when we finally get rid of them, <laughs> though they will be very hard to part with. With loud music on his new stereo, being able to adjust his equalizer and have his tuner and cassette deck meant a day of dance and soul family happiness. Amplifying his life was the way he'd surround his person with his brothers and sisters as his speakers woofed and tweeted that his mid-range of love had the entire film. When I think, when I think of daddy, I think of a man small in stature, but a man with a big heart, a heart of gold. I think of his unconditional love for family, and by family I mean not only his immediate family, but all persons in his life. Daddy was a hardworking man who made caring for his family a definite priority providing solid support for his wife and building a secure life for his loved ones. As the eldest brother, he ably assisted his siblings whenever called upon. Even though I did not live with my father, I was never left out of the many family gatherings, picnics, parties, and even weddings. He always made sure that we were all together I always more made sure that everything was on point. When I think of daddy, I think of a supervisor on duty. A man who was very meticulous. A man who had an eye for detail. If given a chore, it had to be done how he wanted. If something was out of place, that daddy quickly recognized, and so it had to be done his way, which was often the only way. Daddy made sure that his children acquired table etiquette, as we had to eat with knife and fork at a table that was beautifully set, especially on special occasions like Christmas. He did not keep his knowledge to himself as he shared his knowledge with us. Which glass for which beverage? Table setting, napkin holding, napkin folding. Unfortunately, I never got it, but my sisters did. When I think of daddy, I think of a sucker for detail. Daddy kept records, believe it or not. On my many visits, I remember seeing him sitting at the table every Sunday, 
religiously. Recording his weekly notes, expenses, jobs, or anything in his exercise books, which still exists in his cupboards, he wrote everything. Not only did Daddy bless my sister and I with his height, but he blessed us with this trait, writing everything. His amazing eye for detail was often exhibited at Christmas, and that was re referred to earlier. When I think of Daddy, I think of a man who was the life of the party. Daddy always tried to lighten the most serious of difficult situations. He always had a story to tell, whether true or made up. Some joke to tell or something to distract from the matter at hand. During one of my recent visits, I was upset with Dad, and as I expressed myself through rivers of water about his eating habits, Daddy calmly responded, Cheryl, will you not stop stressing yourself and sit down on the bed? All I could do at that time was sit on the bed, smile, and ponder. This man for real, though? When I think of Daddy, I think of his love for food. Putting in sauce on Saturdays went without saying. Corned beef and biscuits, fish cakes, and he did a mean macaroni cheese. Daddy loved cuckoo and could stir a mean one too, not one lump. In earlier times, my brother Vaughn and I made several trips to Nelly, our Iva shop, because Dad had just had to get a pint juicy. When I think of Dad, I think of how blessed I am to have had a dad like him. Our relationship really matured and blossomed as I grew into adulthood. Whenever I called and needed a father's shoulder to cry on, or just to talk, he was there. When I think of dad, when we, sorry, think of dad, and what we think we would miss most, we thought of his humor his laugh, and of course, Aisha and Shanice would miss his cooking. Whenever he heard Aisha say that she was hungry, his response was, you're hungry, you're hungry, eat your monkey. <laughs> With that, he quickly prepared something to eat, but would beckon for Shanice first, in a way she would always remember, Shan Shan, then he would call Aisha. So Shanice was always first. What Greg would remember is how dad would be working on the car, and as a task was completed, he would say with his hands akimbo, no, with a huge exasperated sigh, knowing that he had completed one task and was about to press on to the next. What do you think you would miss most about my dad? about Godfrey, about G or GG. Dad, I wish you could see me now. As I am wearing the dress I wore at my 50th birthday celebration. It was then that you told me how beautiful I was, but not without adding, you could still make a bull called Poppy Chain. <laughs> that was his way of saying, I love you. I find great comfort in the fact that dad died peacefully where he loved, in a home that he worked so long and hard to build in his home. Seeing so many people here to say goodbye to dad is testimony to just how loved he was and how much he will be missed.
We thank God for lending that to us all these years, for the time we spent together, his sole family happiness, his transparent road of hospitality to barbecue happiness, his support, his advice, and most importantly, his unconditional love. These will never be forgotten. Dad, we already miss you. We love you. Sleep in peace until we meet again. My final thoughts are epitomized in the following poem as I recite it to and for my siblings. <clears throat> Our father kept a garden. Our father kept a garden, a garden of the heart. He planted all the good things that gave our lives their start. <laughs> he turned us to the sunshine and encouraged us to dream, fostering and nurturing the seeds of self-esteem. And when the winds and rain came, he protected us enough, but not too much because he knew we would stand up strong and tough. His constant good example always taught us right from wrong. Markers for our pathway that will last a lifetime long. We, Cheryl, Vaughn, Alan, Gregory, Andre, Aisha are our father's garden. We are his legacy. <clears throat> Thank you, Dad. We love you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, <clears throat> Cheryl and Gregory. It is never easy to offer a eulogy for a parent. We now have two tributes, a poem by Andre Gittins, followed by a song by Mariska Gittins. Andre and Mariska, poem and a song. Hey, good afternoon, everyone. I can't imagine the amount of memories that I've been going through since I've been here, seeing these faces uh, a lot. Some of the faces obviously have matured over the years, but I could definitely remember every single one of you. And I just, I'm really grateful that y'all took the time to come out as we close a chapter as Godfrey. I mean, all y'all know my father. Uh, fun loving, always laughing. As everyone described before, his love for cooking, his love, he was just a social person. And he grew up having a lot of parties, a lot of gatherings. Gittin's family always loved to throw a party. And actually last night, I went to karaoke and by Clay Best, and shh, boy, that was the closest thing that I see to get his party in 35 years. I see my aunt, he has 83 years old, I ain't gonna tell you. <laughs> she, she met me look shame. And my uncle's just double fisted, bumba. It, it just reminded me of years ago, and it was a really nice environment. And it just, it was the getting of, of all. And I miss it. And I was glad that we had that last night. 
is a, the occasion is not one that you know you look forward to, but if that's what it took to bring us together like that, I'm grateful that we can all enjoy that time. Um, I have a poem here. Are you all bearing me? A father. A light is from our household gone. A voice we love is stilled. A place is vacant in our home, which never can be filled. God gave us a beautiful father, a father who never grew old. You were always there with a helping hand. Help us now to accept his plan. We miss you now, our hearts are sore. As time goes by, we miss you more. Your loving smile, your gentle face. No one can take a father's place. May the choirs of the angels receive you. And may you have rest and peace everlasting. Amen. Next, it's going to be my daughter to sing you a, a beautiful song. Good afternoon.
We now have our first Bible reading. This will be read by Reese Gittins, found in St. John's Gospel, chapter 14, verses 1 to 4. The first Bible reading is taken from John chapter 14, verses 1 to 4 and 6 to 7. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And if ye had known me, ye should know my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him, and have seen him. Here ends the reading. I'm going to invite you now to stand and stretch your legs. And as you stand and stretch your legs, we will turn to page number four. And together we will read Psalm number 46. So we stand, stretch the legs, turn to page Number four, and together we read Psalm number 46. God is our hope and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear, though the earth be moved, and though the hills be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof rage and swell, And though the mountains shake at the tempest of the same, the rivers of the flood thereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most Highest. God is in the midst of her, therefore shall she not be removed. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen make much ado, and the kingdoms are moved, but God hath showed his voice, and the earth shall melt away. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. O come hither and behold the works of the Lord, what destruction he hath brought upon the earth. He maketh the wars to cease in all the world. He breaketh the bow, and nappeth the spear in sunder, and burneth the chariots in the fire. Be still then, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen, and I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Let us be seated now as we hear the second Bible reading. That is being offered by Arian Pierce. Good evening, everyone. The second Bible reading is taken from 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 to 18. But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. 
Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And do so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with wherefore comfort one another with these words. Here ends the reading. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. Shall we stand? I speak to you in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Kindly be seated. <clears throat> Words from the lesson read a short while ago. Do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? The story is told about a little boy who was afraid of the dark. And one night his mother told him to go out on the back porch and bring, bring in the broom that was on the steps. And the little boy said, Mommy, you know I do not want to go out there. It is dark out there. His mother replied, Son, you don't have to be afraid of the dark. Jesus is out there. He will look after you and protect you. Little boy said, are you sure he's out there? Yes, I am sure he's out there, his mother said. Jesus is everywhere, and he's always ready to help you when you need him. 
So a little boy went to the door, and turned the knob, and cracked the door a little bit and looked out into the darkness. And he said, Jesus, if you're out there, hand me the broom. <laughs> in our lesson, in the lesson for our service, Jesus was saying farewell to his disciples. Those whom he had lived with and loved and taught. And they were afraid as well, like the little boy looking into the dark. They were afraid that he was going to leave them in a dark and difficult world to what seemed an uncertain future. For those of us, family and friends of our brother Godfrey, who knew and loved him, his departure has perhaps left us feeling like that little boy staring out into the dark and unwilling to see a future without he who was husband and father and sibling and friend and neighbor. Without him, even as the disciples found it difficult to understand life without Jesus. Those of us who live on this island know that every once in a while, without warning or notice, the lights go out. We've had that recently, haven't we? We've had the experience of the power in our homes going out. And when the power goes out, especially if it is night, we search for something to give us some kind of light. Looking for that piece of candle that we don't know what we've done with before. A torchlight that don't have any batteries in it. And we look around for, even for a match, anything that will give us some kind of light. But I would like to suggest that this time, for those of us who are bereaved and who are missing our brother, and who will never see him again in this part of the world, I would like to suggest that at this time our candle is Jesus. He will be the candle that will give us some kind of light in the darkness of our lives at this time. I want to assure you this afternoon that God is with you in the pain and the grief that you are suffering. You are not alone. Again and again, the Bible tells us that God is close to those who are suffering. And Psalm 34 says, The Lord is close to the brokenhearted. And Matthew chapter 5, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be what? They shall be comforted. And the hymn writer asks the question and answers it. Will your anchor hold in the storm of life when the clouds unfold the rages of life? And he answers it in a chorus. We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll, fastened to the rock which cannot move. Thank you, my sister. Thank you. You know the sound. At times like these in our hearts, we may be upset. And yes, sometimes we may even be angry with God for taking those whom we love from us. But I want you to know that there is nothing wrong with feeling that way. Have no fear about telling God exactly how you feel. There is no point in praying to God with a mask on and feeling something different beneath. Yes, we are upset. Yes, we are angry. Yes, we are in our sorrow. We ask ourselves, but why? When there are so many other people walking around who are not doing anything constructive, who don't love anybody, don't even love themselves. Why is it that it seems that the people that we love specially are taken away from us? Grief hurts and sorrow is a pain which is as real as anything we will ever experience in life. And so I say to you, my sisters and brothers, do not be afraid to share your regrets, your fears and your pain, for a burden shares becomes half a burden. And it is when we, re we can share our burdens, it's when we can voice our fears and our frustrations, it is when we can share our memories that those burdens become much easier. The disciples shared their concerns and Jesus assured them that it would not be the last time that they would be together. But there would be a time in the future when they would meet again in his father's house with many rooms. At times like these, I like to assure those who are mourning that death is like a gate through which we must all pass. 
from which we must all pass from life in the body to life in the spirit. That death is not the end. It is not the termination of all things, but rather the transition from life in the body to life in the spirit. So I believe that one day we shall meet again in our Father's mansion, which has many rooms. I would like to think that our brother would say his farewell in the, these words of a poem, which I offer now for your consideration. And we can imagine him saying, when I come to the end of the road and the sun has set for me, I want no rights in a gloom-filled room. Why cry for a soul set free? Miss me a little, but not too long, and not with your head bowed low. Remember the love that we once shared. Miss me, but let me go. For this is a journey that we all must take, and each must go alone. It's all a part of the master's plan, a step on the road to home. When you are lonely and sick at heart, go to the friends we know and bury your sorrow in doing good deeds. Miss me, but let me go. And so, my friends, as Christian people, we do not say goodbye. We never say goodbye because we believe that in our Father's house there are many rooms. And so we say to our brother, Vio con Dios, my brother, go with God until we meet again. Amen and amen. And now we stand to sing the hymn, When the Roll is Called Up Yonder. Our brother Godfrey Stanton will be taken from this place for cremation. And so I ask you to remain standing as we, are, we offer the prayers of committal. I heard a voice from heaven saying, write this. Happy are the dead who die in the faith of Christ. Henceforth says the spirit they may rest from this labors, for they take with them their record of their deeds. Man born of a woman has but a short time to live. 
But the flower, he blossoms and then withers. Like a shadow, he flees and never stays. In the midst of life, we are in death. To whom can we turn for help but to you, Lord, who are justly angered by your sins? Lord God, holy and mighty, holy and immortal, holy and most merciful Savior, deliver us from the bitter pains of eternal death. You know the secrets of our hearts. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Forgive us our sins and at our last hour, let us not fall away from you. Ensure and certain hope of resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ. We commend to Almighty God, our brother Godfrey Stanton, and we commit his body to the elements, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. And we beseech you in your infinite goodness to give us grace to live in your dear love and to die in your favor. But when your well-beloved son shall come again in judgment, both this our brother and we ourselves may be found acceptable in your sight. Grant this for the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, O Lord. Amen. Rest eternal grant unto him, O Lord. Let light perpetual shine upon him. May he rest in peace and rise in glory. Amen. And now we sing our final hymn. It's this hymn of thanksgiving, a hymn of affirmation, and a hymn of faith. Let us sing it as, as we mean it. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of his son, washed in his blood.
I can't remember when you weren't there When I didn't care for anyone but you I swear we've been through everything there is Can't imagine anything we've missed Can't imagine anything the two of us can't do Through the years you've never let me down You've turned my life around The sweetest days I've found, I've found with you Through the years I've never been afraid I've loved the life we've made And I'm so glad I stayed Right here with you Through the years I can't remember what I used to do Who I trusted who I listened to before I swear You've taught me everything I know Can't imagine needing someone so But through the years it seems to me I need you more and more Through the years Through all the good and bad I know how much we had I've always been so glad to be with you Every day You've kissed my tears away As long as it's okay I'll stay with you Loving you through the years.